the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome to New Hope Presbyterian Church, whether you're here with us in person or watching on live stream. I'm glad you're here to worship with us. I am Andy Moy. Our liturgist this month is the formidable Jessica Winowich. Our organist is Magdalena Benedium. And I'd like to read you New Hope's statement of welcome and inclusion. Welcome. Recognizing the great diversity in which God has created humankind, we welcome you as God's own body and soul, young, old, or somewhat in between. You may live alone as a couple or within a family. You may identify with different racial or ethnic groups. You may come with your own sexual identity or, and gen gender expressions. You may have unique physical and mental abilities. And you may be firm in your faith or seeking your path. You are welcome here. Due to the increase in COVID, COVID cases here, the task force is implementing new procedures for exiting the sanctuary. From the back to the front row, one at a time, and we'll exit the church through the Narthic side door. Please do not congregate in the aisle, hallway, or Narthex. Socializing at a distance outside is safe for now. Thank you for your cooperation. Good morning, I have a few announcements. Thank you to everyone who donated blood or volunteered at our Red Cross blood drive last week. The drive supplied the Red Cross with 19 units of blood. Our next drive will be October 14th. You will receive a survey soon via email asking you to answer some questions about your interests and preferences for adult Christian education, including Sunday school. Please fill that out when you receive it. It will be very helpful as we plan for fall programming. If you are interested in volunteering to work with our youth and children, please talk to Michelle Cobb or Rebecca Tucker. Our guidelines include two adults with children at all times and that all volunteers have a background check. Our next book club begins Tuesday evening from 7 to 8.15. We will be reading Walking on Water, Reflections of Faith and Art by Madeline Wingouse. The book club meets online, so let Colleen know if you would like a Google Meets invitation. Next Sunday, August 15th, we will have a special offering for our presbytery Rise Against Hunger event, which is scheduled for October 3rd, World Communion Sunday. At First Columbus and three other sites in our presbytery, we will pack thousands of meals to feed hungry people around the world. While we did not have a presbytery-wide event in 2020, both All Saints and Morningside congregations made generous contributions to the event in previous years. So we hope that New Hope will continue that tradition. Envelopes in which you may place your contributions are available in the Narthex. Please make out any check to New Hope, memo RAH. You may place your contributions in the offering plate or mail them in if that's more convenient. New Hope session meets on August 19th at 5.45. The meeting will be online. If you are interested in joining the church at that meeting or are otherwise interested in attending the meeting, please let Colleen know so she can send you a Google Meet invitation. Now, please rise in body or spirit as God calls us to worship. I will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in my mouth. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. 
and let us extol God's name together. Please be seated. If you say that you have no sin, the truth is not in it. Excuse me. So let us humbly confess our shortcomings to the God who made us so that we may give up these burdens. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed in your way. You offer the choice of the Holy Spirit, yet we waste away in sin and grief. Yet we turn away in doubt and despair. Forgive us, God of grace. By the power of your spirit, make us more tender and kind, living in your beloved children through Jesus Christ. got good news. God loves you and is proud of you for admitting your failures. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. not yet at the point of being able to pass the peace in individually and in person. So give a wave to the folks that are here and for those of you at home you can wave too. Beloved ones, the peace of Christ be with you. daybreak our souls wait for your light more than those who watch for the morning let your holy spirit illumine our hearts with the light of your redemption a new day a new life in christ amen our first scripture reading is from first Kings chapter 19 verses 4 through 8 listen for a word from the lord but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head were the cake baked on hot stones and the jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank, then he went into the and the strength of that food, 40 days and 40 nights, to Horeb, the mount of God, the word of the Lord. Thank you. I'd like to have a few words with the little folks. Do you believe in angels? What about it, Maddie? (laughs) 
Anybody? What do you think? Is there such thing as angels? If you is there's if you do, do think there's a such thing as angels, what do you think they look like? Do you think they have wings? Do you think they wear all white? Have a golden halo? What do you think? Y'all are not a talkative group. <laughs> Have you ever seen an angel? No. There's a lot of talk about angels in the Bible and both our scriptures today have angels in them. I have a feeling when I do the sermon that I'm going to be speaking to you as opposed to the adults who can be pretty skeptical. You see, I know what an angel looks like because I've seen one. And I will tell you in the sermon what she looked like. Let's pray together. Lord, give us the hearts of children so that we might see what they see and learn to be as innocent. Our New Testament reading is from Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Let's go to God in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the contemplations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. How many of the bigger people here believe in angels? About half. Pretty good. I have a fun fact for you. Not real fun, but sort of fun. There are 283 references to angels in the NRSVP Bible. 105 in the Old Testament and 178 in the New Testament. Since there are 39 books in the Old Testament and 27 books in the New Testament, the New has six and a half references to buy <clears throat> per book, and the Old just two and a half. Luke has 24 references all by itself. What we can see from that is that angels are a big part of our biblical education, and even a more important of our, part of our Christian understanding. So it's an odd thing to me that we more that <clears throat> we sort of brush them off as biblical fiction. We've become more sophisticated, of course, in our understanding of the laws of nature and biblical narratives. But we believe some things in Scripture are absolutely true. Why not angels? The first mistake we make, I think is to think that angels look like the cartoons. Some of the biblical angels do look like something otherworldly, but some look just like us. Remember in Mark, the two Marys went to the tomb, they met a young man dressed in white robe who was an angel, but just dressed conservatively. There are several references to folks that knew Jesus not recognizing them Mary, after the resurrection, Mary Magdalene thought he was the gardener. The disciples on the road to Emmaus walked seven miles with Jesus without recognizing him. So I submit that the Hebrew scripture is accurate. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. I believe in angels. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I'm talking about folks who bring chicken soup to you when you're down. I'm not. I believe in real, sent from God to set something right, angels. The creed that we will say today says that angels are sent to deliver a message. 
And I believe this because I actually met one. Now you know that's batty. I know you think that's batty because you've never seen one. But do you know actually what one looks like? Do you think they have wings? They don't. If I were designing an angel, I would make it look like me. Everyone is more willing to listen to someone who looks like them, right? But what if God wants you to find your own way and not just obey orders? What would an angel look like? I was raised on a farm by parents who lived through the Great Depression. Consequently, they were careful with money and I got that ethos from them. I do not mean that they were, they were generous or if they were cheap or parsimonious. They were just careful. And so I became careful. I tried to buy on sale. I became familiar with prices so I could get the best ones. I did make modest gifts to reputable charities. But if someone on the street asked me for money, I stiffed them. Sometimes even being mean about it. After all, I worked for my money and they were just going to buy liquor with it. And then I met the angel and she was not happy with me. I was next in line to have my groceries rung up and there was a black lady in a wheelchair in front of me. As the cashier rung up, rung up her groceries, I put mine on the belt behind hers. I was not paying much attention, but then I saw the cashier was ringing up my groceries with the ladies. I immediately cried out, oh no, those are mine. The black lady turned in the wheelchair and looked me in the eye and said, I told them to put it on my tab. I was astonished. My jaw dropped and I could not think of anything to say. The lady paid the bill and rolled away. The cashier handed me my bags and I rushed out into the parking lot to, to at least say thank you to the lady. She was gone. Just like that, a lady in a wheelchair had disappeared into thin air. Now you can think what you want to say about that, but I was immediately ashamed that I was not more like her, and I decided to be more like her. Now I carry a $20 bill in my pocket, and if I'm asked for help, I give it. And you know what? It feels good. Amen.
spies and body of spirits, and join me in saying what we believe using two questions of the Westminster Larger Catechism. What is the work of creation? The work of creation is that word God did in the beginning by word and power make of nothing. The world will become a thing certain for himself within the space of six days and all will be good. How did God create angels? God created all the angels, spirit, mortal, holy, and silly mighty and power to execute his commandments and to praise his name, yet such as he can. Please be seated. We are not yet to the point where we can take prayer requests from the congregation, but if you know of someone who needs prayer, keep them in your heart as we go to God in prayer. Friends in Christ, God invites us to hold the needs of our sisters and brothers as dear to us as our own needs. Loving our neighbors as ourselves, we offer our thanksgivings and petitions on behalf of the church and the world. Loving and forgiving God, we welcome you. We come to you with grateful hearts and hopeful concerns. We are grateful that you have brought us to this place safely. We are grateful that we have found each other. We praise you for these and many more blessings. We do have concerns that we want to bring to you. We individually lift them up now. God of mercy and healing you who hear the cries of those in need. Receive these petitions of your people that all who are troubled may know peace, comfort, and courage. Amen. And now, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us in the words of the language closest to your heart. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. To contribute to the work and mission of the church, you may use the collection plates at the rear of the sanctuary, or you may mail your tithes, offerings, and pledges to the church office, making your check out to New Hope Presbyterian Church. Please join me in a prayer as we bless the offering. As Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, let us offer ourselves to God. Receive these gifts, O God. May our lives be a fragrant offering that is pleasing to you. In union with Christ's offering for us. Amen.
James said that mercy triumphs over judgment. Put away judgment where there are angels in disguise all around us. So go forth and always preach the gospel and when necessary, use words. Amen. You, we will exit um, back rows to the front and you will be um, told when to leave your seat so there'll be somebody to come and point to you and then you can get out of here.